my dearest education, forgive me for writing in such formal tones, but some things can't be captured in 140 characters or a selfie. And what I've got to say feels more important to me than an update status. So the problem is, our relationship isn't going too well these days. In fact, it's because you've changed. It might have taken a few decades, but really, if you look back over the centuries, you now stand for something completely different. It's fair to say over the last few years particularly, you've been hanging out with entirely the wrong crowd. Now, those in Whitehall may mock, but perhaps we could just take a few moments and pause and reflect and think about what is it we really want? What is the purpose of education? What if the main, not sole, but main purpose of education was to improve happiness, develop resilience, and build well-being? What if the more time we spent thinking about some of these human skills, that maybe we could just simply accept that academic success would follow? This is not a breakup letter, but it is a letter to call for change. Why? Well, simply, English young people are sitting once again low down the league tables, but this in terms of happiness. And despite prosperity getting better in England over the last 50 years, happiness has barely improved at all. 16-year-olds are told, around half of them, that they've failed. Despite the system in which they have failed it is one-dimensional, only measures one type of intelligence and one type of academic attainment. I've worked for years as a business coach and an educationalist. I've worked with thousands of people and I've watched hundreds, including myself, fail. Why? Well, it's not because of insufficient talent or technical ability, but often it's because of the lack of depth of emotional resilience, being in a position to understand your own purpose and being ready to thrive. And if we don't deal with this through practical ways, then it leads us to a fairly sad and depressing place. Depressive action, social isolation, depression, stress, anxiety. These are not great things, and yet they're sadly missing from our curricula. And when people suffer unnecessarily, physically and emotionally with these, actually they don't suffer on their own, do they? But they suffer with their families, and the future business employers suffer with them. In this scenario, no one feels like they're winning at all. We know that one in four people will suffer a mental health difficulty. So why are not preparing people for what we know they're going to need, which is self-possession and, and emotional security? Now, there's no silver bullet to deal with this. And we've got to acknowledge that starting a conversation surely is the right starting point for us now. Qualifications are important, but they're far from sufficient for helping people live happy human lives in the world in which we've created. There's an obsession by regional and national government of measuring economic impact. There is endless talk about skill shortages and skills gaps and the need to solely meet the needs of employers in order to drive up productivity standards. The necessity of growth is always economic and rarely human. My dear education, in the system you've created, you simply are valuing the wrong things. Feels like the right time to have a conversation. Feels like the right time to change. The conditions should be seriously and simply be better. So what might a great system look like? Well, firstly, to start acknowledging that we need to teach well-being and that well-being is a valid educational outcome. Feels like a great place to start and also the development of character. William Channing wrote that the actual um, birth of society sits with an individual character. And I believe the character we develop in colleges and higher education institutions and schools is of massive societal importance. <coughs> it has a huge effect. And whilst technical education is something that's going to get you a job, it's character that's going to keep you there. We all know this. It also helps you become a better brother, a sister, a neighbor, a community leader, people we need to live next door to in the future. And it's not just about character development, but it's about emotional literacy. If you look to the economist Richard Layard in his book Thrive, he often reports that people who've got strong levels of emotional literacy also correlates with their overall high levels of life satisfaction. So it feels like this becomes increasingly important too. 
There's a Franco-Bulgarian philosopher called Todorov who actually talks uh, in an existential way about the modern condition being trapped between the two pillars of freedom and responsibility. And that actually we need to make choices in our lives of what sort of life we want to lead. Surely in a great educational system, as educators, we would scaffold some of those choices, scaffold some of that thinking. People would find a place to, to trial and error, to find their passions, to find their purpose, to experiment. And actually different passions would be valued in the same, same way. The wood craftsman with the science graduate. Young people would be allowed to explore their values and understand how they connect with the society in which they live. That feels like it's something missing from right now. But we have got hope. Because Generation Z, the ones coming through right now, thoroughly believe in themselves. And that's a superb thing. To think they're equipped with all of the things they need to find, and actually they're carrying around in their pockets most of the time. So perhaps all we need to do as educators and business leaders is to facilitate them, their journeys of discovery, their just journeys of finding their passions. And occasionally, they might need help in understanding what mean, makes perseverance and how to deal with setbacks in life that we're all necessarily going to get. Perhaps we occasionally might need to help them unshackle themselves from their digital world and work out what emotions mean in the offline, or as sometimes I call it, real world. <laughs> so this is what I'm writing to you about. This is my idea. Now, I know, my dear education, you don't like radical ideas. You and your friends don't really like that. So actually, let's go back to some old ideas, some old thinking, some old wisdom. I'd actually call upon the ancient Greeks and the Eastern philosophies to give us some help in, in guidance at this stage. You know, Aristotle said that it was a sign of an educated mind that can entertain a thought without accepting it. So let's, for a few moments, see if we can entertain some thoughts. I turn to the ancient Greeks and try and rediscover a concept of a ret. A ret's a fascinating uh, idea. In ancient Greece, the concept of a ret was the fulfillment of potential. People of a ret were not only brave, but they had the highest levels of effectiveness. In the Homeric poems, they had to use these heroes of men and women of a ret, had to use their bravery, their wit, their strength, and all of their intelligence and character in order to make the world a better place. Let's rediscover ret. Let's help people find their potentials in that. Henry Thoreau is often misquoted, but I like it anyway, as saying that most men lead lives of quiet desperation and die with their songs still inside them. Surely our challenge now is to not only inspire a generation, but inspire them to sing as well. From the Buddhist philosophy, the mantra of all life is suffering is well established. But in that philosophy, it's ameliorated easily through teaching. Let's bring humanism and compassion back into our classrooms through our teaching. And let's deal with people and help them become, build capacity in dealing with the ups and downs of life, which are inevitable. In fact, more than inevitable, they're essential to help us grow. Let's help them find peace in the world that we know they're going to have to live in. So before we're seduced by rhetoric, Perhaps we can pause and think, what is it we want to take away? What am I really asking you to do in this love letter and call to change? Well, actually, I'm asking for three things. Firstly, I'm asking for us to start a collective and urgent conversation that all of us need to participate in, both sides of what seemingly is a divided line, to really think about what the purpose of education is, and what is it young people really need rather than replicating what we often have always done. Second, let's take some time to rebalance our system between academic attainment, but using concepts of positive psychology and well-being, and perhaps some of the old philosophies in order to improve the outcomes for young people in terms of building their resilience and their happiness. And finally, let's credit the skills of young people in more than just academic attainment. 
Qualifications are important. They're our current understanding of a portable currency. But they're not enough. And we know they're not enough deep down. So let's try and rebalance what we're trying to do. My darling education, I love you. And I always will. Write back soon, because I'd love to know what you think. <laughs> Yours, always. Thank you.